Welcome back. A fantastic conversation we're having here in Studio Mobile. Loan apps. Are they a necessity or are they a liability? So many of your questions have come back. Let us try and get them answered right now. Um, Sam, allow me, let me, not Sam rather, but Linda, as our lawyer here. Mm -hmm. There's something you say that really caught my attention and it, seem it, has, it, it seems to have come back with our audience. So allow me to ask it. Yeah. You said your digital identity should not be your legal identity. One minute. Okay. So you have you you've, you've, you clearly put that for us on the on the platform. So how would you go about um, this issue, which has been brought a lot by our audience, where their IDs have been stolen, or mm -hmm. they've let it somewhere, or a security issue, and someone took loans on their behalves, and they are asking, what can I do? Someone asked, can they sue help for putting them on CRB? Mm -hmm. So does my digital um, identity mm -hmm. equal my legal identity? Yeah, I think if I choose to separate my online persona mm -hmm. and my real life persona, I should be given that opportunity to do that. For example, there's stuff we post on Instagram and you have nice shoes, you have, you know, this nice house, fashion, you're traveling the world, but the truth is you're in your apartment in Utiru, like, yeah. you know, you're just relaxed there. But Tala is gonna use that to credit score you and say, by the way, this, to this use person- To Instagram. Is, to use Instagram to score you with, with your social media, mm -hmm. right? So I think, and, and I've said this before, that there needs to be that separation that I can actually use your app without agreeing to you getting you know um access to my social media mm -hmm. feed and stuff because sometimes it's entirely not true um so the second thing about identity theft that we've had people lose their ids i think one of the things that they should do is to uh, you know report to especially to the director of criminal investigations if you have you know your, you know your brother took a loan with your id you lost your id i think that needs to be reported and as last week we had a training with the um, director of public prosecutions together with safaricom mm -hmm. and they indicated that uh, there's a cyber crime unit even within Safaricom, for example, that you're able to, to get in touch and, and, and report these particular matters and also get in, terms, in touch with the DCI. I think Kenyans need to take advantage of that. But how easy is it to go through that process? I know it's not easy and uh, there was a suggestion offline on how we can make this, you know, reporting of yes. lost IDs pretty easy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not this is not possible. But also, um, I think looking at the historical problems around our digital identity system, our identity system, is that you have one ID from the time you're born to the time you die. And if you replace your ID, you need to take it to Nyayo House where they activate um, the new serial number. And that's most of the Kenyans do not do that. Yeah. So most people do not know about about that. And then the fact that our ID system is actually run out of the country, you know. So I think um, that whole disconnect needs to be fixed. Um, and uh, it would be prudent for Kenyans to especially engage and even suppliers to especially engage on the discussions around Huduma number uh, because that's what the government is promising to be solving this particular identity issue. Um, but we will have the same problem that you have the same Huduma number from the time you are born to the time you die. So what if, and this Huduma number will be linked to your biometrics. Um, so what if somebody gets in my Huduma number and accesses this particular information, especially with digital lending, you don't need me to show up at your office, you don't need my biometrics. Um, I think we have a wider problem Problem as a society regarding identity that I think needs to be solved. Um, but the final thing that I would I would want to say in terms of um, the need for capital, you know, um, we need to come up with policy. I think um, in the country that allows us, and especially startups, as somebody had mentioned, how do we access capital and at affordable rates? Uh, the government has not done much in that particular regard. I think we can better use our NSSF, for example, um, and ensure that NSSF goes into funding um, even companies, startups that are looking for capital. Because we know a lot of the digital lenders, sorry to say, but a lot of them are foreign companies that have set up in Kenya to lend, and they're bringing in capital from Europe at 4%, but you're giving it to us a month at 7%. I think it's unfair, and the government should step in by you know, putting the money where the mouth is and saying we will use NSSF even in better ways. If we have pension plans, can it go into helping small traders to be able to access credit? Right? Okay. I suspected uh, Ivan would need to respond to what you had to say. So, <laughs> but, I mean, I so we go this way. <laughs> uh, Sam, let's give you a chance to give us your final thoughts. Some questions that came up, if I'm sick, if I've had an accident, mm. uh, I still have to pay back, but I can't work. What am I going to do? Um, if I've been blacklisted, can I still get a government job? Can I get a, a green, green card? card? Help our viewers understand some of those concerns as you give us your final thoughts. I think that on the two questions, uh, if you have borrowed and uh, you had terms on which you borrowed, basically uh, the lender and the bureau 
will be able to put you into the credit uh, history records according to those terms. But if you've had a sickness or you, and then you have not been able to pay your loans, <coughs> the thing to do is to go back to the lender and try to explain to them. Reach out to them. Uh, reach out to them. And what normally happens is that you can agree on a new plan and they reschedule so that the default then is meant to become active again. Okay. Ah. So your score then gets better. But you'd once. have to prove that you're unwell and yes, not yes. capable of oh, working. Yeah. In terms of getting a government job, yes, chapter, uh, chapter 6 of the uh, Constitution talks about financial probity and therefore government employers will always ask for a certificate of clearance to show that your financial records are in order. So it's become a necessity every time you apply for a job in government, that document is required. Okay. But what I need to say today... The green card issue? Sorry, the green card. Can I still get a green card if I'm listed? That was also one of the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you can. Mm. That yeah. hasn't come up yet. That hasn't issue. come up yet. Right. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, what I needed to say is that uh, today what Kenyans need to understand is that the Credit Deference Bureau has become a depository of your credit history. It's not about being listed the way the mechanism started. Today, if you take any loan, your record will be with the Bureau. What's important is that what type of record does the Bureau hold on you? Mm. Because that record then reflects your behavior. And that behavior is measured by credit scores. So if you have good credit scores, and good credit scores means you have scores 600, 700, going all the way up to 900, it means that your behavior is good and therefore lenders are willing to look at you favorably. So it's a question of now trying to manage your credit affairs using the information that is now on the Credit Reference Bureau. So people should not be saying, please take me out of the Credit Reference Bureau. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, but um, there's also the question on um, help in CRB. If um, someone has defaulted on their help, they're being posted on CRB. It has been a concern. A parent also had the concern of the issue of that uh, our students should not be listed on help for, on, on, on CRB rather for defaulting help. How, do you, how, how would you advise someone in regards to that? Uh, the way help works is that when you apply for the loan, they give you the facility for the duration of your course. After you complete your course, you have one year grace period before the loan becomes active. It is only when the loan becomes active that the, your bureau record also is activated. So in one year, if I don't have a job and I just graduated from university, my name will go on CRB for defaulting that help? Yes. Yeah. Although I feel like the concern of the, of the person who texted in was that they've repaid, Yes. Mm -hmm. but they're still not able to access credit. I think that is something that can be sorted out. A few yeah, people so what, get, what, how, who can they email? How, how do they reach out and sort of... They need work? to call us, the Metropol Credit Reference Bureau, uh, uh, on our numbers that are available, or dial star 433 hash. Through that system, they will be able to be helped. Usually, there will be, uh, maybe there were some, 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 some charges okay. that were never cleared, and okay. that's why the credit code is still kept like it has some default items. Fair enough. Let's, let's uh, give our other guests a chance to, to wrap up. Uh, go ahead, Ivan. Yeah, so I think it's been a really interesting conversation this morning. Um, I just want to reiterate a couple of points. Um, I think digital credit is a net positive for the Kenyan economy, um, and we believe it's a form of financial inclusion. You think about the 83% of Kenyans who can now access this, but it is an industry or a sector with growing pains. I think we acknowledge that. Um, and from the consumer side, um, I definitely think there's a need for increased financial literacy. Some of us providers um, are going ahead to proactively do that. Um, I do think that there are a number of parties who can also help. Um, although, you know, typically it is something that has to be voluntary, right? You can place education in front of people, but you can't force people to learn, right? So people have to also have this willingness to learn. Um, from the business side, I think that uh, many digital lenders also have to hold themselves to a higher standard of conduct. Right? And that's why we formed the Digital Lenders Association, to be able to define what that actually means and sort of be able to place um, consequences in the event someone doesn't do that. Um, but because we're an association, there's only so much that we can do. Right? And so to that extent, I think we do welcome a broader discussion with the regulator. Um, in this case, will be the Central Bank of Kenya. Um, and also, just not just regulator, but almost all stakeholders. So for example, uh, on the issue of identity theft, and that is driving fraud. I actually think that um, bringing in telcos like Safaricom and Airtel and Telcom into the picture can actually help us solve this because indeed I can steal your ID and go ahead and then register uh, a phone number to it, but it's only the telco who you have to literally go to one of their shops to register it would be able to tell you that indeed this is person XYZ attached ID 123 and this is confirmed. And so I think if we work together, 
we'll be able to address that. Okay. Um, and yes, yeah, so I think, you know, generally speaking, um, we are in a sector or an industry um, that is young with growing pains, but we should be careful not throw the baby out with the bathwater, <laughs> given some of the concerns that we have. Well, the interesting analogy is young with growing pains, but don't yeah. throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> uh, Kevin, you have the last word. What do you want to leave our viewers thinking uh, about? From uh, I've seen most of the viewers commenting that uh, digital lenders should be regulated by CBK just to bring in down the interest rates. I think from we have to look at two. We have to look at two things. You, you see, banks have deposits. So if you look at the cost of funds for Taiwan banks and Taiwan two banks, it's around two to three percent. I've seated uh, in tables where these fintechs are raising money. Their cost of lending is upwards fifteen percent per year. So you see, when you look at those two, doesn't really mean that uh, even if CBK comes in, necessarily the rate is going to come down. If they force them, the rate, if they force them to charge a lower rate, it means that then their business stops making sense, and then that eighty-five percent of his clients who are using the money in the right way, they lose that money. They suffer. They suffer. So they don't end up doing their business. So we also have to look at it from that point of view. One of my colleagues mentioned that uh, some of them are borrowing at 4% in Europe and lending at 7%. When you look at interest rates, you have to consider something we call an interest rate parity. 4% in US doesn't necessarily mean 7% in Kenya. Most probably it means more than 10%. So the cost of so there's, there's a difference in that parity in terms of rates. So that is why uh, the cost of funding might look different. Uh, just to wrap up, in terms of we need a lot of financial literacy. Teach people to understand that debt is good, but if you use it for the right purposes. Uh, I should also mention that we also have to look at uh, cheaper ways of, uh, of, of raising capital for Kenyan businesses. So pension plans, unit trust, have that option for investing in private equity. To diversify. Yes, it's only that that avenue to capture that market is not really as straightforward as it looks, and the opportunities are not that much for pension plans. Out of one trillion, I think only 1% is in private equity for pension. So I think that is an area we can explore. Y yes, so, okay. yeah. Mm. All right. All right, and that brings us to the end of this conversation. Thank you so much for your feedback. Let me begin with Kevin Wangi, the investment analyst representing Amana Capital. Thank you so much for being here. Ivan Boa, he is a board member of Digital Lenders Association of Kenya, Santi Sanam. And we also had Sam Omukoko, the CEO for Metropole. We appreciate your feedback, sir, as well as Linda Bonyo, founder of Lawyers Hub Kenya. All of you, thank you so much for your contribution to the discussion. All right, that's how we wrap up this discussion. And thank you to all our viewers. 2243 is the SMS line. Hashtag, as always, is daybreak. We take a break. When we return, we take some breakfast. Mm -hmm. And Willita Buru will help us with that. Keep watching. This is Citizen TV.